that before you know and then so the hymn that Did you pick the hymns? You yes, I picked 197, the one that we're doing today. So, but we're going to do them just as I am instead of that. Cross Jesus. What? Sorry. You're good. You're good. I didn't So we won't have I'm sorry. I gave you a little extra. I, I, keep, I, I, think, I kept saying, you just carry the one that you have to do. And I was thinking, I was like, no, we might need to switch it up. So I carry the whole thing. I just, saw, I just saw Caleb come in. You probably. I know. I talked to him. Yeah. He seemed like he was happy about that. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Trinity United Church of Christ here in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, an open and affirming congregation that truly tries to practice the statement that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. A few things to share with you this morning before we move into our worship. Uh, you will notice that um, uh, the month of March is when we collect our, one of our special offerings in the United Church of Christ. It's our one great hour of sharing offering. Uh, there is a pamphlet in your bulletin explaining what this offering is used for with an offering envelope. Uh, we ask that um, you consider uh, being generous uh, to that all church offering that we have every year. Um, want to make sure that uh, you remember to sign the pad that's on your pew. Uh, also, on Palm Sunday, April 10th, we are going to be receiving new members. Uh, if, you want, if you are interested in becoming a member of Trinity, um, check the box in that, uh, in that pew pad that says that you are interested in joining. Also, we're still, if you have lost your name tag, we're still uh, taking names because in the next couple of weeks we're going to be using, doing something special with our name tags. Uh, so if you have lost your name tag, don't know where it is, um, and you need a new one, please sign the paper that's over on the uh, sign-up board, uh, and we'll make sure that you have a new name tag. And um, I see a lot of people with no name tags this morning. 
Okay. <laughs> um, I believe those are all the announcements that I have for this morning. Does anybody have any other announcements that I'm forgetting about? I have to admit my, my brain is a little bit hazy this morning, spending the weekend with five teenage girls. <clears throat> people. No, they're, they're people, but yeah, they were other uh, female. Ah, never mind. <laughs> Working on it. Working on it. <laughs> I will get to that. <laughs> Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Let us join together in our responsive call to worship. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You who have no money, come, buy and eat. Thirst for God in a dry and weary land. 
we seek God's power and glory in the sanctuary. Listen carefully to God and eat what is good. Delight yourselves in the rich food God provides. Here our souls are satisfied as a rich feast. Together our mouths praise God with joyful lips. God offers us steadfast love and a covenant relationship. We are called to be faithful witnesses and leaders. We have come to meditate on the living God. We seek inspiration and empowerment to do what God asks. Let us strain our hearts and our minds together in prayer. We come before you, gracious God, seeking what money cannot buy. Only you can provide nourishment for our souls. There is no other source of meaning in our mixed up world. We can find no fountain of strength or sustenance apart from you. Surely you can be found where two or three are gathered together. As a community of faith, we call on you believing that you are nearer than our next breath, more available to us than we can think, more caring than we ever dared to imagine. Uphold us now that we may worship on wings of joy. Amen. My friends, God's gifts are available, available to all of us, yet some don't use them for the common good. God is faithful, extending love to everyone, yet many of us create idols to occupy our time and our attention. We are blessed far beyond our deserving, yet we grumble and complain. How desperately we need to turn around and find new direction. Let us join together in our prayer of confession as we seek a new relationship with God. Let us pray. We have been tempted, loving God, to go our own way without reference to eternal truths. We seek our own gratification rather than the well-being of all your children. We compare ourselves to others and find their failures, but seldom discover our own shortcomings. We seek to build our lives by our own limited design rather than by your larger purposes. We engage in mortality in the name of freedom and become enslaved by our selfish ambitions. The ground on which we stand is crumbling under our feet. O oh God, forgive us and grant us a firmer foundation. Amen. God grants us strength, strength to overcome temptation and offers us a second chance to produce the fruits of righteousness. Receive these gifts from God who is faithful in covenant with us and with all people. Open yourselves to the continued guidance of the Holy One, for God's steadfast love is better than life. 
God's mercy is abundant. God's provision for us is extravagant. God's ways are higher than our own. Praise God with joyful lips for the forgiveness we receive through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. like to invite any of the kiddos who are here up front. My fruit. Yay, we have big kids too. <laughs> oh fine, whatever. <laughs> hey Miss Esther Owen. Hey. This guy. Hey Kaden, hey Jacob. Come on little lady. Come on Franny. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna come down here. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, there's mama. And we have a very fresh kiddo. Hey, baby. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Hello. Hi, friends. Well, this morning we are talking about fruit. What? So in the Bible, Jesus tells us that we should go out into the world and bear fruit. What the heck does that mean? To bear fruit. Caden, what do you think? To get fruit, maybe, maybe. What's another G word? Maybe grow fruit? All right, guys, so everyone grow fruit right now. Ready? I don't know how to. Me either. I don't know how to. How do you grow fruit when you're not a fruit tree? Right? Well, there's a story in the Bible. Are you a fruit tree? What kind of fruit tree are you? She's an apple fruit tree. Well, you know what? Guess what? You are going to have an apple. Look, you're an apple fruit tree. You're ahead of the game, kiddo. All right, Esther. <laughs> you don't know what you are? What kind of fruit would you be? A watermelon? Well, we're taking a turn. I like it. You know what? I got a watermelon. I know they don't grow in trees, but that's all right. That'd be kind of fun, though, a watermelon tree. Nope, would not want to stand underneath that tree. Nope. A watermelon tree. So there's this story in the Bible that Jesus tells us where there's a tree, okay? And it's supposed to grow some fruit, but it doesn't grow any fruit for three whole years. It just doesn't do anything. It just kind of stands there. And the gardener says, mm, get rid of it. And Jesus said, nope. Okay. Caden just had a light bulb moment. I saw it. I saw it. And Jesus says, no, no, no. We're not going to cut that thing down. We're going to give it another chance. And guess what? Boom. Yep. You just got to give it some time to grow, right? You just got to give it some time to grow, right? Sometimes these things take time. So how can we be like a fruit tree? So Jesus wants us to be like a fruit tree. You are an apple tree. <laughs> what do you think, Caden? How can we be a fruit tree? What do you think? 
What kind of fruit should we give? <gasps> Kindness. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. I got a lemon for you. <laughs> Yes, so we can grow fruit like kindness. And Esther, can you hold up your apple? That says peace. So we can grow peace and share peace. Jacob, what you got? What's it? it says goodness. Sorry, I ran out of space. I did not plan ahead on that one. Sorry. Yes, that word says goodness. That's another fruit that we as little Jesus trees can grow and share. You saw the peach. You saw that peach, you little snake. Yep, another fruit that we can grow as little Jesus trees. Joy. Owen, would you like the, the peach? There you go, little man. All right. There's some other things that we can grow as little Jesus fruit trees. What do you think? Don't you look at me. <laughs> little cheater. <laughs> You're working smarter, not harder, right? What other things can we do? What other things? Go ahead. Happy. Yep, so we can be happy. Oh, I don't have that one. Yes, but yes, being happy. Yep, and joyful. What? Who? The banana has the word faithfulness on it. So that means doing what you're doing right now, showing up to church, hanging out with whatever Looney Tune is sitting up front with you in the mornings right? And going to Sunday school. That's how you show that you're being faithful. Um, this one. Patience. Yeah, this one's a hard one for a lot of us. Yeah, it doesn't matter how old you are, but this is definitely a fruit that we should all work hard to grow and share. Miss Esther, would you, er, yep, not Esther, Franny, sorry. Would you like the, I guess that's a apple? Is that an apple? Orange? Thank you. Thank you, guys. I don't know my fruits. <gasps> All right. The pineapple. Self-control. Self-control. That's a good one. As Jacob comes back up for another one. <laughs> How about we practice that self-control just a scotch? <gasps> We're going to come to that. <laughs> Jacob. Oh, I've missed you, my man. All right. The other one is gentleness. Can my friend over here, what's your name? What's your name? Connor. Well, hello, Sir Connor. Would you like my strawberry of kindness? Thank you. And I have one more. It's the most important in my humble little opinion. L-O-V-E, love. Yeah, so I'm going to give, can you pass this to Miss Remy Joe for me? She doesn't have a fruit. She gets some grape loves. There we go. So what I'm asking of you guys is just to remember that each and every one of you is like a little Jesus tree. And your job is to grow lemons of kindness, grapes of love, uh, strawberries of gentleness, joy, peace, all of the things. So that when you go out into the world, you can show someone else how to be peaceful, okay? And to share all of the fruit, all right? Do you think you can do that? Yeah. Yeah. Let's all go out there and be fruits, all right? Little Jesus fruits, all right? So can we say a really quick prayer? Okay. Just say it after me. Ready? Dear God, thank you for fruit trees. Thank you for letting us be your fruit trees. Amen. Thank you, and if you'd like to keep your fruit, you're more than welcome. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You can go back to your seats. Thank you, Miss Kristen, for that fruity children's sermon. Our first scripture lesson for this morning is recorded in the prophetic book of Isaiah, 
be reading from the 55th chapter of Isaiah, beginning with the first verse of that chapter. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you, have, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and, na- and nations that you do not know you shall run, shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Our second lesson for this morning is in Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, Reading from 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, beginning with the first verse. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents, and do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. If so, if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and God will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, God will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. And our gospel lesson for this morning is recorded in Luke's gospel, reading from the 13th chapter of the book of Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have been coming looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. 
If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Here ends the reading of God's word for this day. May God add a special blessing to the hearing as well as the reading. Amen. Well, this morning we continue our Lenten journey. And as most of you have probably gathered, the focus of Lent is repentance. Repentance of our sins. It's not an easy time to be reminded every Sunday that we need to pay attention to the times and ways we stray from God's paths. But we do stray. There's a story about a young boy who was attending a Catholic school. Because the younger children often forgot their sins when they entered into confession, the priest suggested that teachers have the students make lists. The next week, when this boy came to confession, the priest could hear him unfolding paper. The youngster began, I lied to my parents, I disobeyed my mom, I was mean to my friend, I fought with my brothers, and and then there was a long pause. And finally, a small, angry voice said, Hey, this isn't my list. <laughs> the point that Lent continues to remind us of is that we all have lists. That We all sin and need God's forgiveness. But sometimes we get so caught up in the messy world around us that we forget what is important to God. In our gospel story this morning, the world is going crazy for some of the followers of Jesus. Speculation bordering on gossip seems to be in the air as they relate stories of Pilate's brutal murder of some of the Galileans who were worshiping. Their blood had been mixed with the blood of sacrifices. How can this be? Why do such awful things happen? What did they do that would bring a about this kind of horrible and shameful death. Why were all of these people killed when the tower fell on them? What did they do to bring that on themselves? We human beings can't stop asking the why and what questions. We can't help ourselves because we want, we need to understand the whys of our lives. We want to make sense of the world. We want our lives to be logical and reasonable, orderly and sane. But here's the thing. Jesus spends very little of his time on earth addressing these fundamental human questions. In fact, it seems he actively discourages his followers from asking wrong questions. In a beautiful book of narrative theology, The Shelter, Finding Welcome in the Here and Now, Poet and healer, Padeg Ohatotama, describes the Buddhist concept of mu, or unasking. If someone asks a question that's too small, flat, or confining, Otama writes, you can answer with this word, mu, which means unask the question. Because there's a better question to be asked a wiser question, a deeper question, a truer question, a question that expands possibility and resists fear. The word mu wonderfully sums up this morning's gospel reading and Jesus' perspective on the kinds of questions to ask. We're the ones who want to pin Jesus down for answers, but he's actually interested more so in helping us ask better questions. As Luke's gospel makes clear, the people who ask Jesus their versions of the why question already have an answer in mind. They don't approach Jesus with an openness to Jesus' response. They come expecting Jesus to verify their deeply held belief that people suffer because they're sinful that folks get what they deserve, that bad things happen to bad people. It's tempting for us to look at such ancient beliefs and feel smugly superior in comparison. 
But how different, really, are the beliefs we hold about human suffering? When the unspeakable happens, what default settings do we revert to? Nothing happens outside of God's plan. God is growing your character through this tragedy. Don't worry, the Lord never gives anyone more than they can bear. Nothing is ever lost. Quit complaining. Other people have it worse. The problem with every one of these answers is that they hold us apart from those who suffer. They keep us from embracing our common lot, our common brokenness, our common humanity. When Jesus challenges his listeners' assumptions and tells them to repent before it's too late, I think part of what he's saying is this. Any question that allows us to keep a sanitized distance from the mystery and reality of another person's pain is a question we need to unask. Moo. Jesus says to the folks who bring him the painful news about Pilate and Salome, Moo, he says to us when we batter God and why. Instead of offering God our hands and feet and our hearts and our souls, Moo, he insists, when we wask eloquent about other people's suffering but do nothing to diminish it. Moo, you're asking the wrong questions. You're mired in irrelevance. You're losing your life in order and in an effort to save it. So start over again. Ask a better question. Go deeper. Be braver, draw closer, repent, which means change your mind, turn around, head in a different direction. Okay, so why and what questions are not a favorite of Jesus? Because these kinds of questions lead us to platitudes, statements made about moral conduct, which gets us nowhere. Platitudes are flat. Formulas are reductive. Theories don't heal, and questions that call for shallow answers aren't worth asking in the face of tragedy. That is the reason Jesus teaches us in stories rather than platitude. Stories open up possibilities. Stories include, unmake, and transform us. Why did those Galileans die? Why did the tower fall? Okay, says Jesus, sit down and let me tell you a story about a fig tree. A landowner has a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Jesus tells his listeners, and one day the landowner goes looking for fruit on the tree and finds none. Incensed, he confronts his gardener. For three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, he says, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it waste the soil? But the gardener begs his employer for one more year, for a little more time. He says, sir, let the tree alone until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not... You can cut it down then. That's kind of a weird story to tell in this particular moment that they're in. What on earth does a fruitless fig tree have to do with Pilate's heinous killing spree or with a massive technological failure that toppled the Tower of Salome, killing 18 people? What is Jesus' point? Well, Jesus has just finished, setting, finished upsetting the crowd straight about the cost of following him and what is required to be a faithful disciple. But it seems folks still aren't getting it. So Jesus uses both top news stories to help these Jesus followers understand that there is no difference between the two events. It is not a matter of degrees or rightness or wrongness or sin or sainthood. Tragic things can happen to anyone. I also think Jesus was making the point 
that the tragedy of these deaths was not in their suddenness and gruesomeness, but in their pointlessness. Unless you repent, in other words, your, your life will be as pointless as their deaths were. If you want your life to have a point, if you want your life to have a clear purpose, repent, and repent daily. When we flip repentance and think of it as turning toward Jesus instead of turning away from sin, something else happens. Instead of repentance being all about what we do to make ourselves acceptable to God, we suddenly find ourselves basking in God's grace. Repentance is a response to the goodness God has done, not a requirement to merit God's goodness. Pastor Jill Duffield writes about attending a gathering where several members of the group had recently received their GEDs. As she listened to others rejoice with these new graduates, she learned that many of the adult students who were receiving their diplomas had been labeled unreachable. She writes, what a pronouncement to make about anyone. Unreachable, beyond hope. No need to try any harder or any more. Impossible to get them. Unreachable. How often do we label people unreachable and give up on them? Look, we say no figs, no fruits, useless. We communicate in word or action or inaction. Cut them down, they are wasting soil that could be better utilized. And then she goes on to ask, how often have we felt written off, labeled unreachable, been cut down to size, dismissed or rendered invisible? How does it feel to be considered a problem? What's it like to know others think you are wasting space that someone else could put to better use. Yet Jesus says, wait a minute. Let me do some fertilizing here. Let me dig into the hardened earth and loosen it up a bit so the roots can breathe. Let's not give up quite yet. There's hope that this life can become fruitful. Christ calls us to the kind of repentance that turns our attention away from ourselves and points our attention toward God. Instead of trying to improve ourselves in order to merit God's love, Christ offers that love to us freely and says, Here, receive this gift. Let me enrich your soil with some manure. Let your repentance become the compost that fertilizes new life. Grace is greater than sin and can bring forth fruitfulness out of barren past histories. In Lent, we must be watchful. We must get our values in the right place, aligning ourselves with God in times of temptation and trusting God's grace in moments of barrenness and brokenness. God will nourish us and prune away. I won't lie, I am a pro at asking the why and the what questions. They are the questions I stick in God's face whenever bad stuff happens. I ask them more often than all the other questions combined. I ask because I want to understand. I ask because I am afraid. I ask because mystery unnerves me. And yet, every time I ask, Jesus says, moo. He says, moo, because why and what are just plain, not life-giving questions. Why hasn't the fig tree produced frig yet, er, fruit yet? Um, well, here's some manure, and here's a spade. Get to work. Why do terrible, painful Completely unfair things happen to people in this world. What did they do? Well, um, hard stuff happens to everyone. Go weep with someone who's weeping without making assumptions. 
Go fight for the justice you long to see. Go confront evil where it needs confronting. Go learn the art of patient, hope-filled tending. Go cultivate beautiful things. Go look your own sin in the eye and repent of it while you can. Or as a poet, Mary Oliver asks, tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? To start, imagine a deeper story. Ask a better question. Live a better answer. And in this Lenten season, take a look at your own torn open place, your unanswerable question, your fruitless fig tree. And sit with the paradox. Hold the tension, because in the dying is new life. Amen.
come to the portion of our worship experience where we share our prayer concerns, where we lift each other up and, 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 and support each other in our burdens that we experience in everyday life. A few uh, individuals to update you on. Um, Ralph Guyman is still at Menno Haven um, in rehab, and um, he, he's not doing great, um, but uh, please keep Ralph in your prayers as he tries to come back, tries to regain his strength. Uh, also, let you know that Gene MacArthur passed away on Wednesday, I think, right, Lynn? Thursday, Thursday. Um, our condolences go to Linda and her, and her sister and her family, and um, the funeral is scheduled for Wednesday at 2 o'clock here in the church. Uh, visitation will be at 1 o'clock, an hour before the service. So you are all invited to come and participate in that celebration of life uh, for Jean. I don't really have any other additions. Was there anything online? Anybody have anything online? Yes, Karen? Sharon, Sharon DuPont? Okay. Okay, Sharon DuPont, Sharon DuPont Moorhead, um, uh, with her husband dying recently, um, she had to leave the apartment that they were staying in, and she still has not found a place to live. She and her dog Jack need a, need a home, uh, so if you know of any place that might be available for her, please um, let me know, and I can let Sharon know. Other prayer concerns? Yes. Ooh, okay, Jean's former sister-in-law, what's her name? Mary Davenport. Mary Davenport. Davenport. Okay, so Jean's ex-sister-in-law, Mary Davenport, was diagnosed with stomach cancer, and they will have to remove her stomach. Okay, I saw some hands over here. Yes, Pat. Excellent, okay. Um, in case you didn't hear that, um, uh, Pat's brother, Charles Hutchins, brother-in-law, Charles Hutchins, H-U-T-C-H-E-N-S, um, is in the final stages of his life here in this world. But um, he does have a strong faith, just like Paul did, and um, he knows where he's going, and the family has pretty well accepted that. Somebody else had a hand up? Yes, Jean. That's, what was the last name again? Garling. G-A. Jared Garling. That's a G, not a C. Jared Garling was in a very bad motorcycle accident, was life flighted to York Hospital and has some serious head trauma. All right. All right. I have to write myself notes or I don't know what they mean on Monday morning. Yes, Andrew. Uh, 
I would love to. I can't. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's um, Andrew's show that he's in. Uh, the sp something spelling bee. Yes, <laughs> that's the one. Button County Spelling Bee. Yep. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody, but apparently, I, oh, there, Linda. Bonnie Sellers, spell it. How do you spell her last name? Okay, Bonnie Sellers is going to have surgery for breast cancer. All right. Let's join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you this morning with so many needs, so many concerns, so many things that, we, that are on our minds, and we just ask that you will help us to feel your spirit leading us. We know that you call us to, to bear fruit with our lives, to do the things that, that you would have us do, to spread your love, your peace, to just be your presence to a needy word, world. And yet we know that we fall so far short of projecting those needs into other people's lives. We just ask that you would help us to find ways of, of feeling your spirit moving in our midst, feeling the nourishment that comes from your spirit so that we can better represent you to the people we come in contact with. Help us to, to be your hands and your feet and help us to, to truly put our faith into action. And we just ask that you bless all those who need to feel your healing touch in their lives. There are so many ways that people are lost, people are lonely, people are hurting. We pray that you help us to extend your love and your healing touch to those in need. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together by saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So many times we use our money for things that don't satisfy or we invest our time in activities without meaning or purpose. God offers us a way of life that satisfies. What we cannot buy, God freely gives us. Our offerings are one way that we express our thanks and our gratitude to God. Let us join together in our prayer of dedication for our offerings. All that we present to you now, O oh God, we have received from your hand. We give so the hungry may eat and the thirsty may receive pure water. We share to send the good news of your word to those who have not heard. We invest in just causes that your mercy may be known among all people. Most of all, we give because passing on your gifts in generous response is necessary to life. Amen.
God sends us as, sent us out as witnesses to good news. May our lips praise God as long as we live. God's steadfast love is better than life. God's mercy and pardon break through life's clouds. Call on God in the midst of each day's tasks. Meditate on God's presence through, all, through, the, through the night. God is our help in all times and places. We will call on God's name wherever we are. God will grant us strength to resist temptation and vision to labor for what truly satisfies. Praise God, whose waters quench our thirst. Thank God for the bread of life that feeds our souls. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Thanks be to God and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.